Good evening. This is John Lamazny, also known as beercritic.wordpress.com. And we are here talking about some of the best canned craft beer that I've ever had. I happen to be lucky enough to live very close to the Sly Fox Brewery. And so I get to see this basically all the time. As a matter of fact, just recently, um, I have really uh, fallen in love with Sly Fox. And the, the thing that's kind of strange about that is I usually don't like lighter styles. Um, but when they're done well, they're done well. And uh, Sly Fox definitely knows how to do them well. They don't sacrifice uh, things like calories for uh, things like flavor for calories. You know, just because this is a um, more traditional brew. And incidentally, I'm looking right here. Let's see if we can see it. We have a 4.9% by volume. That is, by anybody's um, definition, a session brew. Um, let's check out the rest of the details. It is a North German style Pilsner. It is definitely light, and I've had it before. It is very dry. It's got a nice crisp uh, palate. And it has won a lot of GABF awards. Um, and the important thing I'm starting to pay attention to is that it is brewed with German Pils malt and German and Czech hops. 44 IBUs, not a very uh, bitter brew. Uh, original gravity of 11.7 degrees Plato. And as I said, 4.9% ABV. So. And I really love what Sly Fox does with their branding. I, I think that their brand is a strong one. I think that they do beautiful things on their cans and bottles. And this is no exception. This is definitely one of the things that makes you pay attention to this can. Um, so as a Pilsner, this is um, something, one of the styles that uh, most Americans who drink beer are more familiar with. I mean, they, when you have a beer, uh, chances are you're either having a lager or a pilsner unless you're really se seeking out some of these um, more craft-oriented brews. And so uh, it's nice to see that pils is being celebrated in the same way that other craft styles are being celebrated by breweries like Sly Fox. Let's go ahead and open it up. Here's my pilsner glass. Let's see if I can get some light behind that and get a better focus on it. And let's listen to the crack. You don't get to hear that very often in my house anymore. Very often it's a cap being taken off or a cork being popped, but this is an exception I'm definitely happy to be making. I'm going to pour it down the side just a little bit so that I can try and keep that head going, but um, let it thin as it goes up. So, uh, classic Pilsner body, bright yellow, very clear. Um, they apparently have an unfiltered version that they make available on tap that is actually uh, quite hazy. And you all know that I love hazy bodies, but um, this is definitely filtered. This is brilliant and clear and beautiful. I mean, it's got a really nice body to it. Let's see if we can get some of that color to show through. Look at that. That is just beautiful. You can see there's a lot of carbonation in the body.
and the head is the head is a little washed out right now because of the uh, light. Let's see if I can fix that a little bit. Take some of that heat off. So definitely a nice thick head hanging on to the glass. Those bubbles are a little uh, bigger than um, some of the other brews that I have. The, the uh, high carbonation, very active as you can see there, and those big bubbles. Um, on some other styles, the bubbles are much tighter. Uh, but this is definitely a head that's hanging on. That's nice. That body is beautiful. Nice bright yellow. You can't really tell from this video, but it is a nice clear yellow. Pale. Alright, so here's me. Let me focus in a little bit. Yeah, so uh, one of the things you encounter very often in a Pilsner, that, that smell that, as I said, many of us are very familiar with, is uh, a grassiness, definitely a little bit of hay, you know. I smell corn and rice, uh, definitely some grains coming through. It makes me feel... Uh, sort of like I'm out in the spring on a uh, on a grassy field. Very nice. Um, not as aromatic as as uh, many other styles. It doesn't have a strong uh, aroma, really overpowering. But uh, there is that faint, nice, crisp, very alluring aroma. Starts off very crisp, um, not sweet at all, uh, definitely about uh, malt, uh, barley definitely coming through. Starts off very uh, crisp as I said on the palate and um, the middle is definitely about that maltiness and it hangs on for a little bit, still hanging on, got a nice longer finish, not overpowering at all. Um, not especially well balanced. It seems like it's much more about, um, well maybe I spoke too soon. There's definitely a bitterness that's coming through at the end and um, it's delicious. I mean it's, it's definitely a very nice nice exemplar of the style. It is not your average brew uh, that you would pick up, you know, a, a, like a macro. Uh, yeah, as a matter of fact, the bitterness really comes through pretty nicely in the end. After the carbonation calms down a little bit, you really start to get that flavor emerging. And, um, the maltiness is still there, that that um, sort of barley and corn flavor, uh, but it doesn't have that same sort of filler taste that you often taste in uh, macro brews. The head is, is still hanging on very nicely. Um, it doesn't have a lot of legs, as you might expect. And... Um, Really not a lot of lace, but the, the flavor is delicious for the style. It's delicious. I would say that if you can get Sly Fox where you are, to go ahead and do so. Um, they make beautiful brews. In, in the cans, they have uh, relatively lighter styles. And in their bombers, they have uh, beautiful higher ABV, uh, Belgian and fruit beer and uh, IPA styles that are just amazing. Go and check them out if you can. Thanks a lot. Bye.